We're going to start with Coulomb's law with a separation of charge of the hydrogen atom, our simplest atom. So we have the nucleus of the atom here, and the one electron the hydrogen has separated by an average distance, and that average distance is 53 picometers. And we want to find out what's the attractive force between the electron and the proton of the hydrogen atom. Well, we want to derive an equation that is called the Coulomb's Law. And what kind of equation is that? Well, let's review what we did for gravity back in Chapter 7. We said that force of gravity equals G M1 M2 divided by R squared. Now, this is a field equation, meaning gravity acts through a distance. You don't have to actually touch the object to feel gravity force. And it has this general form. G is a universal gravity constant, G equaling 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. <coughs> now, uh, what this means is we multiply the first mass times the second mass divided by R squared and multiply it by this proportionality constant that we find uh, true for the universe. And again, a, a pretty common equation for Newtonian gravity. Let's see how the Coulomb's law looks, because we have another field force. The electron is attracted to the proton without actually being touched by it, so it acts through a distance. And the equation looks like this. Force electric equals new constant K, uh, also known as Coulomb's constant, multiplied by the absolute value of Q1 multiplied by the absolute value of Q2, all divided by R squared. And the K constant is equal to 9.0 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared divided by C squared. I have quite a few things to define here. First of all, Q is going to stand for charge. Let's look at the analogy here. So the gravity constant is now going to be a new constant known as Coulomb's constant, or I guess we want to call it the electric constant. Mass is going to be analogous to charge. And with the charge, we have two of them. And it's possible to be negative or positive. So we want to absolute value this so that we don't have a, a situation where we might get a negative force. But negatives and positives in, in physics indicates direction. Now what about the C? Now C stands for a unit of charge called a Coulomb. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit here. We look here and see that a proton is 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 C, or Coulomb. Electron is the opposite sign of that, but the same charge. And that distance of 53 picometers, now pico is 10 to the minus 12 meters. So we can insert these values, okay, into this equation to get electric force. Now let's take a look at the constants first. The constant for gravity was 10 to the minus 11. And uh, the constant for electricity is 10 to the 9. So quite a difference here, much stronger force. So we observe electric forces to be stronger than the gravity forces. So let's go ahead and plug this in and get an answer to this. Force electric equals 9.0 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by the absolute value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 multiplied by the absolute value of negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, all divided by 53 times 10 to the minus 12 squared. And then we get a value of 8.2 times 10 to the minus 8 for the force electric. So force electric equals 8.2 times 10 to the minus 
I might wonder how large is that? Well, consider that a mass of electron equals 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So the electron is really small, and of course the proton is 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, so it's you know, not incredibly large either, but much larger. But the electron then is feeling that electric force pulsing in this way. Because it's being attracted. So that's force electric acting on the electron. Now because of Newton's third law, of course, the proton would be attracted in this direction towards the electron. Now we recall that electrons are moving pretty fast around the nucleus. So that would only be at this instant where the attractive forces are pointing in those directions. Now what about the Coulomb? Now one Coulomb is the charge on 6.25 times 10 to the 18th electrons. So electrons are a very small fraction of a Coulomb, so many, many, many of those equals uh, the charge on one Coulomb. And that's how we handle the separation of the charge of the hydrogen.